Um, yeah, I'm Robin Trow. I'm a chartered mechanical engineer and retired from work about seven years ago. Um, I left school at 16 in 1966 uh, with five GCE O levels, mainly in um, technical subjects. So I became an apprentice at the local paper mill, um, which meant that I went to college day release and eventually on a sandwich course. Um, during the um, uh, apprenticeship I did lots of work with in the workshops and practical work including one stage using a hacksaw to saw through a, an 18 inch steel beam that was in the way of some work that they were going to maintenance where they were going to do that they couldn't um, flame cut because of the fire, fire risk. That took a, that was a whole Sunday spent doing that um, and another day we had to lift a 10 tonne uh, turbine rotor about four metres up in the air to go onto the turbine floor um, using a hand powered crane which meant you pulled pulled down on the chains about a metre and the thing moved about a millimetre so it took all day to do that as well so it's very hard work but after the apprenticeship I got some quali enough qualification to become a chartered mechanical engineer and I changed jobs I became a design engineer for mechanical handling equipment and uh, we mainly for the paper industry again, and we worked um, all around the world on different, different projects. On um, one project we did, we were told we were going to be handling uh, sugar cane waste, and they, we said, well, what's that? So they sent us this bag of sugar cane waste that looked more or less like straw. Um, so we built a conveyor, lightweight conveyor to handle this, and then found out when we were on site installing it that in fact sugar cane waste after two years on a slab in the rain and sun is more like a caramel with fibres in it so it was uh, virtually impossible to handle. Um, but we, we, we worked at it and got, got a system working. Um, after seven years with that company you know, I moved on to another firm that did um, industrial combustion equipment. Um, so we did burners for uh, power station boilers, air heaters for making soap powder, um, air heaters for coffee making, dry coffee, and um, for mashed potato. Now, most of the, the um, soap powder air heaters and the um, mashed potato air heaters were all gas powered. The coffee ones were um, used diesel oil because they didn't care whether they got any black in it from the soot because you couldn't see it. Um, so be careful when you're drinking your coffee. Um, one of the jobs we did there, I did there was a um, boiler control system which was worth about three quarters of a million pounds for an uh, oil refinery. And we had to make it very reliable. We had to run at full, full power or full output, more or less um, 50 weeks of the year. Um, because if they lost the boiler system, they'd lose their catalytic converter which would cost about £100,000 an hour in uh, stoppage costs. So um, that was quite a, quite a job and quite an interesting project actually. One of the most sophisticated boiler management systems in the country at the time, in the 1980s. Um, again, after about seven years with that company, I moved to Southern Water um, on their capital works programme. And for the last 20 years of my career, I was working for Southern Water and, uh, and, uh, and their main supplier on the uh, Capital Works, designing sewage works and designing uh, sewage pumping stations. Um, two of the highlight projects I did there was uh, uh, being the lead mecha mechanical, electrical, instrumentation and control and automation engineer for a £60 million um, sewage works upgrade, um, which uh, was quite interesting and quite demanding and also rebuilding a pumping station that had been designed by a company that didn't know what they were doing and didn't perform as, as expected. Um, it was badly designed in every respect and we had to get it working without really changing any of the structure. Um, and that was about a million pounds worth of work and we get it, got it done in, in a, about nine months we did the project and got it working. And instead of costing £10,000 a month to uh, maintain, it now costs nothing to maintain apart from normal um, operational spares and operational maintenance. Um, so I was quite proud of that particular project. Um, then, 
seven, say seven years ago, I decided that uh, I'd had enough of working and, and retired. So that was, that's a nutshell of my career. Um, any questions? It was maintenance work at the start of my time. Um, the company I worked for, they had a small training college, so I spent the first year at work at their training college um, doing day release um, uh, at college. And then I went on to one of, the, went to one of their maintenance workshops, helping the training to be a millwright. Well, I suppose it's a millwright is the proper term, but it's a maintenance fitter, um, working on maintenance of the machines um, and general work of that nature. Um, I passed uh, ONC, I think it was, with the certificate I got, which and I got good marks in that, so they took me on to a sandwich course, a uh, three-year sandwich course to do um, HND and a, and a certificate called CEI Part 2, which is a you know, IMEC Institution of Mechanical Engineers uh, qualification. And during that time, I did six months at college and six months in the work doing around the various departments, um, either sometimes with working doing work, uh, maintenance work and sometimes just doing office work and design work. How old am I? How old am I and what's my name? Uh, I'm 64 and my name is Robin Trow. How did I get the apprentice placement? Yeah. Um, well in those days it was probably, uh, might have been simpler than it was now. I wrote lots of letters when I was at school, um, you know, before I left school and to several companies in the area. And I was, I was offered jobs at three companies. One was a company called Open Aero in Strood, which did uh, gearboxes. Another one was Tilling Stevens, which was part of the Roots Group, and they built um, engines for comma vans. And the other one was Reed Paper, as a paper mill. I don't know, I went to the Reeds because they, I think they paid me five pounds, 12 and sixpence a week, which is about five, Five pounds sixty-two, and the others were only paying me five pound twenty-five, I think, and that's why I took the read job. Most expensive contract I've worked on, or worked, um, I suppose the most expensive was the sixty million pound uh, sewage works upgrade. But I've worked on projects um, ranging anywhere from uh, hundred thousand pound up to sixty million, or right through the range. Oh, I don't know. What would make it better if I did my job again? Um, I don't know. I think I, I, I always worked to try and do as well as I could, and I always thought, well, when I get to the stage where I can't improve on the job, I won't, I'll stop work, and I th thought I got to that stage, actually. Um, so I don't know what would make it better. No, I can't answer that one, I'm afraid. I'll have to think about that one. Um, my favourite project was the sewage works upgrade, the £60 million sewage works upgrade. Um, it was very challenging and we worked across the whole spectrum of the engineering field that I was involved with. So it was, a, it was quite a challenging and demanding job. Why did I become a Bloodhound Ambassador? Um, because I was interested in Bloodhound from the start, I went to a talk by Richard Noble, the project director, about six years ago, I think, um, when it was just starting, and I thought, well, that sounds good. And then um, I became an ambassador for STEMnet in Kent, and uh, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers support a Bloodhound, and they wanted ambassadors for themselves and for Bloodhound, so I um, got on that scheme. Because it's a fascinating project. I mean, everything in engineering is in it. There's, there's technology, there's... Um, electrical technology, computer technology, engine technology, um, structural technology, there's, there's everything in it and it's, it's all available and you can look at it and understand it. Have I always wanted to be an engineer? I think so. My father was a fitter, he was an aircraft um, fitter in the, in the war, engine fitter in the war, uh, Second World War. Better tell you that than you might. <laughs> well, I think it's the wrong war, but he was an engine fitter in the Second World War, and I, um, he was always in engineering, and I was uh, fascinated by it. And it seemed to be the thing to do. Um, working for Southern Water, I was there for 20 years, 
Um, and uh, range of, virtually all the time working on their Capital Works project uh, program, which meant that we were doing all the upgrades of all their, their, their systems as they became, as EU regulations made it more and more stringent what they were pushing out into the rivers. Um, and it meant that every five years there was a new challenge to things. So it was good work. It was interesting work. Would I take a job because of the, the money was good but the job was horrible, or would I take a job because of the money was poor but the job was good? Um, well, you've got to bear in mind, you're going to be there probably 40 hours a week. Um, if you don't like the job, it's going to be hell. Um, I think you've got to like, like what you do. Um, and in technology and engineering, it, if you're interested in that sort of thing, then there's always something that's worth doing. The money's not bad anyway in most jobs, but yeah, I, I would say go for the job that you want to do, because you're going to do it for a hell of a long time. Which job did I find the most interesting? Um, I suppose the, the Southern Water one, with the, because it was very, very varied with the sewage works and the pumping stations and that sort of thing. And, and it, was, it, it was going through, at the time, when I started with them, it was very low tech. And by the time I'd finished in 20, after 20 years, it had become a very high tech process. And it turned from a sort of back... Uh, a farm type attitude of, of low quality engineering into something that's quite sophisticated. It might not look it when you drive by a sewage work, but I can assure you the new ones are quite sophisticated. If I wasn't an engineer, what else would I have done? I don't know. I think I'd have had to work in something to do with science, something in the science, the STEM area. I was very good at maths, I was very good at physics, I was reasonably good at chemistry. And I could get by in the metal work and I could get by a technical drawing. Um, so it would have been in those fields. And my English, I don't know whether I took the English so level or whether I failed or whether I didn't take it. I can't remember now. But I know I didn't pass. <laughs> but English, but having said that, English is very, very important. And you, you really, you know, English is, is an important subject you should try and concentrate on. Yes. It's difficult to say, really, because you learn, you learn all the time when you're an engineer. Technology moves on all the time, so you're always learning. Um, there's no, so you can't really do a, a job as an engineer without having to learn all the, virtually all the time. Probably the last job, the, the big pumping station, that I put right because it was such a challenge. But the company had been sp spent four years trying to put it right, and within nine months. The team I, I was leading had got it finished and done, and we cured the problem. We introduced other problems, but at least the job was, it was doing what it should do. Well, physics, physics, and physics is the su subject that physical science in, and physics is the, probably the subject I'm most interested in because it's such a broad field. You know, it covers everything from stellar, you know, from cosmology right through to Nanotechnology. Yes? Which job did you enjoy the most? Which job did I enjoy the most? Well, it must have been Southern Water because I was there the longest, so yeah, I think I, I kept that one going for 20 years, so that was quite an interesting. Just one more question. Okay. Uh, what qualifications do you um, say that we should have when we come from engineering? Um, Maths, physics, probably chemistry is useful. No, it's not necessarily essential, but those maths and physics, and I would suggest English. Um, modern language is useful, but not essential. I mean, I've worked with projects all over the world, and I haven't met an engineer yet who can't speak English, at least at a technical level. Um, and that's South. I'm talking about South Africa, Southeast Asia. Uh, South America, Europe, they all speak English as far as engineering is concerned, so you can get But if you've got a, a modern language, it's very useful. <coughs> yep. Thank you very much. Okay.